Hi there, welcome back. In today's video, I will show you how I paint a quick portrait study with the selective start method. I like this painting method since it lets me build my painting in an almost complete way. Each brush stroke is supposed to be using the correct color, be the correct shape, be the correct value, and be placed in the correct spot. But this is in a perfect world. Mine is a little bit, well, less perfect. I will continue to strive for that level of spot on correctness, however. You see here that I have set up my palette before starting to paint. I've mixed my paint so that there are three value areas. At the top are my lights, in the middle, the middle values. That makes sense, right? And on the bottom are the darks. By arranging my paints this way, it helps keep me in check with the values of my painting. If I'm going to place a brush stroke in a light area, then I must dip my brush into a light pile of paint. With this thought, then it helps to see our subject or reference picture in three values only. Decide when you're looking at the area you want to paint next, if it is in the light, the mid values, or the darks. More often than not, if you put the correct value in the correct place, it doesn't really matter much what color you use. After all, painting is capturing the light. With selective start, a new brush stroke touches the last brush stroke. I continue to build out the painting in this way. Connecting the brush strokes one to the next, I paint very slowly at first trying to completely finish one area before I move on. Here I have selected the eye to start with, and I know it looks like I've placed it in an awkward spot, but bear with me, it should all work out in the end. With Selective Start, it is your choice as to where you choose to start the painting. Often I choose an eye, but not always. I like seeing my painting appear before me, like magic especially on a time-lapse video. The effect is really cool. But more importantly, I feel like this method of painting helps keep my work loose, more painterly. Before Selective Start, I was rendering every part, every element of my painting to a full, realistic completion. The look, I think, was more like an illustration than a work of fine art makes sense for me since my background is in graphic arts. Illustration, logos, t-shirt design, things like that. So to break out of this way of working, I needed a new way to think about how I would paint. With each brush stroke, I'm thinking that I want to make a really great mark. A brush stroke that could stand on its own as a work of art if it needed to. Imagine an entire painting filled with amazing luscious brush strokes bold, succinct marks. This can be seen in the paintings of John Singer Sargent. He is the master mark maker. Each of his brush strokes were said to be placed with bravura, which means great technical skill and brilliance shown in a performance or activity. The display of great daring. <laughs> I'd say that sums up his style of painting for sure. So another aspect of fine art painting to think about are the edges. A good painting will often have a variety of edges. Some hard and easily seen, and some soft, barely able to be seen, and some completely lost. These edges will disappear fully into the background. Sometimes it isn't until the end of a painting when I will soften some edges and sharpen others. The last few brush strokes of my paintings are my favorites. The ones I can make with, that's right, bravura. The color palette I'm working with here is a limited palette, often known as the Zorn palette. It consists of four colors only, white, black, yellow okra, and red. Every color needed will be mixed from these colors and only these colors. To help me see many of the colors that can be created from these four, I've completed a color study chart. 
If you want to see how to make one of your own, let me know in the comments and I will make a how-to video on this topic. In fact, if there are any topics you would like me to cover, please let me know. I'm really so excited to be part of the YouTube community. It's such a great platform for artists to let people see how we create, how we think, and how we see. And how I see is shapes of light. I don't see objects. I see a puzzle of varying shapes and values. When all put together, make the thing that I am painting. That's why you often see artists squinting when they are looking at the thing they are painting. If you wear glasses, you may just need to take them off and then look at your subject. This is only good for seeing the values, however. Open your eyes fully to see the colors of your subject. So remember, you're not painting things, you're painting the light. Here the hair is painted with larger dark masses where the head is more in the shadow. The front of the face is also in the shadow, but not a shadow so dark that the features are completely lost. Painting shadow areas too dark is often the sign of a novice painter or someone who's copying a photograph. Photos often depict the shadow areas of a scene too darkly, so if using photo reference, remember this. Try editing the picture in Photoshop, where you can play with turning up the light in the shadows. With this painting, I wanted to experiment with painting a head that is backlit. I really love the way the light hits the back of the neck and the hair, the way it shines through the back of the ear, showing how translucent an ear can be. Also, it gave me another chance to practice painting an ear. Having some of his edges hit hard, like where the outer lobe is next to the hair that's brunette and dark, and softer and loose edges of the inner ear. I don't want to sound like I'm giving you a list of rules to follow, just some tips to have in the back of your mind, some comparison points for when something just looks off. If you're getting some value from this video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Also, you will want to click on the subscribe button just below so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos about making art, turning art into fashion, and other cool stuff. Hit the bell icon to be notified of when a new video is ready. So when I get to a point in my painting, usually when I step back from the easel to judge the place I'm at, and something looks wrong to me, I will ask myself these six questions. I have a list of them posted next to my easel so I can easily remember them. So the first question I ask myself is, the area in question being painted in the correct value? The second question I ask, is what I'm working on more red, yellow, or blue in color? The third question I ask, is the area more high in chroma, or does it need to be less chromatic, more gray or neutralized? The fourth question, did I use the correct transitions? Did I use a warmer color as it goes towards the darker color? This is usually what I want here. The fifth question I ask, are my edges too harsh or maybe too soft? And the sixth and final question, is the drawing correct? Going through this process always helps me fix or work out a problem. Okay. Going back to transitions. I've learned that transitioning from one color and value to the next is best done in steps. When I used to blend my colors together instead of walking or stepping through the transition, my painting looked dull, lifeless. Think of this. You have a yellow light area moving towards a darker blue one. If you simply blend the two colors together, you'll get a weird green color in the middle and the value may or may not be what you want. Instead, I've learned to mix my colors to move from the lighter yellow in steps. So a brush stroke of dark yellow placed next to the first yellow and an even darker yellow brush stroke next to that one. And then a mid-value blue stroke moves on to a darker blue. So this gives a clear, non-muddy transition from light to dark using color instead of blending. But above all, remember, you are the master of your painting. You're the boss. The painting does not control you. If you try a color or make a mark that you decide is not what you wanted, then just wipe it away and try again with a different color and a different kind of mark. 
oil paint is very forgiving. I can push paint around for days, experimenting and playing if I want, making marks with different tools other than brushes like with a palette knife. This can be fun. I've even pushed things like metal chains and engine gears through my paintings. Makes a really cool effect. You may want to experiment with the composition as I have here was starting by placing my eye and the other features so close to the edge of my canvas. I was going for the line of the neck to the ear to be on a diagonal going through the painting from corner to corner with the ear ending up close to the middle of my square 12 by 12 canvas. In the end, the composition has worked out beautifully, I think. If you'd like to see my art turned into fashion, check out my website, sjcsportcouture.com. To connect with me, you can check out my art shop at shellyjcox.com and follow me on Instagram with the handle at sjcoxart. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one and happy painting.